okay, you got me there, but still, um, um, I know we went to the moon because I know we went to the moon because I know it, Jared. Don't try that on me. Don't try that eyebrows, but eyebrow raising thing. I know we went to the moon because Buzz Aldrin has been on many interviews since and has talked about that. He even talked about the radiation. It wasn't like he was avoiding it. Yeah, right. I never seen him talk about. He talked about the radiation, and then he, but his his statements are very conflicting with that of Al Beams. He says that. Um, uh, oh, it was if you if you uh, I was just going to sleep and I saw them. Al Bean says if you're just going to sleep, you don't notice them, okay? And uh, he says that they're not very fast. Aldrin says they're not very fast. Bean, sorry, it's Bean who says they're not very fast. Whereas Aldrin says I couldn't before I could turn my head and get my eye on the flash, it was gone. And obviously these 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 flashes, right? They're they're supposed to be cosmic rays hitting the spacecraft, which obviously signifies that this wasn't. You know, sufficient shielding, obviously, and, and you know, shuttle astronauts, they don't even go beyond the Van Allen belts, and they see these flashes too, okay? And that, that just shows even the shuttle with its superior shielding isn't not enough to block this kind of radiation out. And yeah, yeah, but the, but there, you know, it, it was a top secret mission, right? It was Apollo, it was top secret because they wanted to beat the Russians, right? They wanted to beat the Russians, yeah. Right, so they, it was top secret. So... So maybe they're just maybe they just maybe they just went, but they just like they like like fake certain things just to like you know. Some people believe that. Some people believe it was entirely faked. It's differences of opinion, really. At the end of the day, the radiation is the true part of it. All the rest is just build up. And you know, if you can't go somewhere because you'll be dead, you can't come back here and tell me you went there. Hold on. Let me go to let me go to one of my sites. Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, right fucking there. Dad, blankets they cover to help them get through the radiation. Blankets? Yeah, like electric blankets, like electric blankets. Oh, I see what you're getting at. You're talking about electrostatic shielding. Like yeah, that's, that thing. That's that's still in the development stages, in still in the concept stages, in fact, because you see the radiation in space, they 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 have what's called electron voltage. Okay, the the uh, the radiation in space it ranges from say two billion to. Uh, 10 billion electron volts, okay? Now, to, to block, to shield away that kind of radiation, okay, you'll need anywhere from 2 billion to 10 billion volts on the outside of the, of the craft. You'll need to electrify the shield, electrify the outer walls of the spacecraft to 2 or 10 billion volts, okay? Now, the Apollo craft had only 125 volts to go with. That's to power the entire ship. It's hard to imagine that they had this kind of electric shielding. Yeah, it's not a lot of volts, but... What if it was just like a little blanket they put around themselves? That's minuscule, mate. That's not going to do you nothing. What about yellow pills? Could they just take yellow pills? Well, they, yellow pills do exist, but I'm not sure how effective they are, but I doubt they'd be that effective when, when you're absorbing literally a death dose of radiation. You, may, you go through the Van Allen belts alone, okay, 312.5 rem per hour at minimum each way, Okay, you'll be dying already by that stage. You'll be have severe, severe, severe uh, uh, cancer. You'll have all this, this diarrhea, fatigue, low blood counts. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they never said anything about being sick when they're getting hit by radiation. That's kind of weird. You didn't even have to just look at them. You've got a hair loss. You'll need skin grafting all over the place because you're severely burned by this radiation. Yeah, well, and I remember watching, yeah, watching shows about Chernobyl and all that, and and I know radiation isn't good, but but they said they had shielding, and it's NASA, and they're like really important, so I know that they wouldn't lie. Yeah, well, as I said before, all they had was the aluminium to go with. That ain't gonna protect from Jack. Well, they weren't trying to fly away from Jack, they were flying to the moon. <laughs> but they had to fly away from the radiation, obviously, and that's gonna do you harm. Yeah, but isn't it like rain? Like, if you go really fast, you don't get as wet? Well, not really, because as Van Allen said, even on a rapid transit through the radiation, okay, you're gonna need you're gonna need you're gonna need shielding for it. Okay, they didn't have that kind of shielding. He even said it specifically that effectively shielding the astronauts is beyond engineering feasibility of that time. That was written in 1961. Back then, they had launched the Mercury capsules. The Mercury's they didn't have much more shielding than the Apollo craft did. Hmm. You don't make this easy. Hold on. I know I can get you, man. I know I can get you. I didn't get you with rocks. I threw some rocks at you. That didn't work. I tried to reflect stuff off you with the retro reflectors. That didn't work. Wait, wait, Dot. 
Did I mention that hammer operators all over the world tracked it to the moon? How are you going to explain that, man? Well, first of all, the typical ham operator doesn't use the said frequency used by Apollo. They see that for ham operators, the FCC only regulates them certain frequencies that you can use. Okay, you can use this, you can use that, you can't use that. Okay, and the signals that that the Apollo broadcasted on was about two gigahertz. Okay, when they launched the Sputnik, the Russians when they launched the Sputnik, they specifically used a signal that was used by ham operators, so the ham operators could tune, could tune in and find out. Oh yeah, we, this exists. This exists. No problem. Okay. But on Apollo, they didn't use that kind of frequency. They used a signal that's not used by ham operators. Okay, sure, the ham operators could tweak their, their instruments a little bit to try to tune into that signals, but only the only ham operators who claim to have done this, they only testify to having tracked the signals when the craft was on or near the moon. And maybe a few, if they're lucky, maybe a few signals on the ride home. Okay, so given how, how much little that they actually did track, okay, it's possible that they had, had a an unmanned probe that was already on the moon up there in advanced or in orbit or whatever beaming back these pre-arranged signals, pre-recorded signals or back beaming them or reflecting them from Earth orbit okay and furthermore the FCC specifically declared that it was illegal illegal for hams to inform the world of any communications not intended for public view okay so if a ham you know tunes in picks up some, learns something that, isn't, that he's not supposed to be leering you know learns something that he, that hang on something's wrong you know, he he talks about that. He gets he's at risk of getting prosecuted by the FCC for it. So how can how can you take how can you trust this guy? Okay, if he's under federal regulations as to what he can and what as to what he can and cannot talk about. Well, you know, you, I, you, I I'm trying to understand. So they can make the adjustment to do it, but they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to make the adjustment. They can do that, okay? But they can make the adjustment to listen to it, okay? But they're under regulations as to what they can and cannot talk about. The FCC specifically stated that in, in the magazines. They, I um, uh, forget the name of the magazine, but basically they made it clear, it clear that you cannot talk about these certain signals. So it's hard, far from being open and honest, okay? It's just another, another police state, really. Well, it's like you're trying to say that NASA's liars and like they're a bunch of Nazis and stuff. And and I mean, I know we already told me that Von Braun was, but he's like the only Nazi there, and he was only there because he knew how to build rockets, right? Well, there was a few Nazis. Von Braun was just the head guy, basically. So there's more than one Nazi. More than one Nazis. Von Braun was just obviously the most famous, you know, because he because he was the major pie, major proponent of this of the space travel stuff and. Uh, he was famous for the V2 and that's and those other rockets that he built. Well, surely they wouldn't put a bunch of Nazis in charge of our space program. That doesn't make sense. Well, what we had to work with. Well, don't, didn't they have American rocket people? Oh yeah, the American, the Americans. They they they, they were put into two groups. The Nazis were put in charge of the of the army rockets. In the U.S., they had their 100% USA Navy rockets. Navy rockets, they tried to launch those, the Vanguard, and they blew up on them, so their contract went to, went to Von Braun. And that's how, that's how it went. Well, he did have a proven track record. I mean, he did... Yeah, whenever the... Whenever the um, rockets. Yeah, whenever the, whenever the Americans were in trouble, they'd always come crying to Von Braun to help them out. They tried launching the Vanguard, that blew up. They tried launching the Atlas at first to launch the first man of space. That blew up, so they went to, to Von Braun. Hey, can you help us launch, launch man of space? Oh, yeah, sure, you can use my Redstone. Thus, Redstone was born. The Redstone was was a, an extension to the V two rocket, basically. And the and then the Saturn V was effectively a a a the byproduct of combining Redstone and Jupiter technology together, which was which were both derived from from this V two technology. So, you're saying it's okay that we used Nazis then because we got to the moon, right? Well, it doesn't justify the fact that these guys were criminals. Okay, you build something, okay, but you still you did something else that was really bad. You got to pay for it. I got you, but you just admitted that he got him to the moon. No, I didn't. Know that they got him to the moon, and so you build something, okay. That's obviously the Saturn V. They didn't have the lifting capacity to get to get the the shielding up there. Okay, the additional the the required weight. Okay, the required or should I say mass? Okay, weight changes depending on where you are in, in space. Okay, the required mass would be 500 tons. That's just to shield a small ship. That's just to shield a small one. Okay, a larger, more comfortable living quarters like, say, the shuttle or the ISS would require even more shielding. 
Okay, so, that so would, we're back to radiation again. Yeah, basically, it would add to the yeah. So you'd add it would add to the overall weight, or to the overall mass. Okay, so you even the shuttle it can't lift that kind of mass. Okay, the 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 minimum mass is five hundred tons. The shuttle can only lift about thirty tons. Well, if radiation is such a problem, then how come Bush said we're going to go to the moon? Because he needed to get reelected, didn't he? Now he's got, now he's now NASA is debating you know canceling the the um, the future moon flights. Okay. Now NASA is debating canceling the moon flights, you know, uh, focus on focus on Earth orbit flights, focus on the ISS again, so it seems they're back to square one again. Yeah, but they're working really hard on that radiation problem of yours, so that just shows it. Well, not... But no, that kind of fucks me up, doesn't it? Mm.